Welcome to the Distill Nation NZ podcast. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm the owner of Distiller here at Hair Creek. I'm joined with my co-host Cameron. He's the uh, the owner or the yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Let's call it that. <laughs> owner of Discovering Dreams Whiskey Tastings, and uh, we're joined today by Peter Hall of uh, Littleton Distilling Company. So welcome, Peter. Thank you for yeah. coming up to the Thank distillery. You, Tom. Yeah, yeah I'm, to be here. I'm looking forward to chatting because I've never tried your gin. I've never tried any of your stuff. Um, so this will be really interesting to because I see you brought some other stuff. We've, we've just had a bit of chat about that. But we'll dive we'll dive into that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I love, like, so anybody who hasn't gotten their mates together and over a round of <laughs> whether it's red wine from the uh, uh, Central Otago or whiskey or whatever your choice is. Anybody who hasn't gotten their mates together and at some point says, you know, we should start a distillery, they're lying. They're lying if they said that they haven't ever had that conversation. <laughs> yep. You then took it one step further and actually did it. What was the catalyst for kind of going from that talking about we should do it to actually going out and doing one? Oh, well, it, well, you met you, a couple of touch points there. Um, it did involve Central Otago. Um, and uh, a labour weekend uh, down there. Um, my eldest son has a has a second house down there, which he uh, spends a lot of time in because his business is a, so he doesn't live there. He lives in Auckland, but uh, his business is in Central Otago. And uh, I collared collared the place um, down there for labour weekend and invited, um, I think there were two other couples, three other couples to come down. And we were just chewing the fat over some bloody good uh, red wine. Uh, (laughs) But it had been going on for a while, so there was a lot of nonsense. And um, um, uh, one of them is Irish and uh, mentioned uh, Irish potcheen, which is a potato based, uh, vodka and um, and I offered the um, the reason for the uh, Ireland, the great famine of Ireland in the way back uh, it was the fact that they, not that there was um, a lack of food it's just they made too many potatoes into pot cheese. Well, it's, <laughs> right. yeah. it's, How did he it's not that? it's nonsense <laughs> but but um, yeah, so that led to another debate uh, <laughs> and so on. So that weekend uh, passed and we were driving home uh, and I'm starting to think, hmm, what would, how would you make pot cheese? And uh, so I got home because I had a bit of time on my hands. I'm meant to be retired, although I wasn't quite at that stage, but... but um, uh, I, I uh, looked into it. You have to make alcohol. How are you going to make alcohol? Oh, well, that's where the potato came, came in. How else could you make it? Oh, well, I pretty soon found that you could uh, use potatoes, you could use kumara, you could use honey, you could use white table sugar. Yeah. And most people wouldn't know the difference. Mm. Mm. It's fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, so I started out with uh, with the, the grand idea of uh, making my alcohol from kumara and uh, manuka honey. That that was my idea. That, unique, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, as unique as that sounds, uh, the cost for your raw <laughs> yeah, ingredients yeah, there yeah, does yeah. sound yeah. maybe that, not as cost effective. That came two or three days later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Because um, I was thinking further ahead, you know, if this is a great success, of, uh, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to need a lot of manuka honey. So um, uh, I know a beekeeper and I rang him and he said, uh, he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he said, oh, I could probably send you a drum of, um, of manuka honey. He said, not, not the real top medicinal stuff, but yeah, but you you need to send me a couple of thousand um, yeah. uh, mm. before <laughs> I put it on the truck, sort of thing. Coughed and spluttered, and, and uh, anyway, I went ahead and made a small amount of alcohol with a small amount of 
uh, Honey and Coomera. Uh, and um, I distilled it, and because um, by this stage I leapt into buying a 25 litre uh, um, copperhead uh, still. I've got one. Yep. Yeah, you got one. <laughs> yeah, I've got one at the back. There. They're actually yeah, yeah, they were they're, they're great. Yeah. Um, I ended up with four of them, uh, but they sta- they started uh, to. Um, I was giving them a thrashing. Yeah, they do right. get they do wear out. And yeah. <laughs> compared with a, a home distiller, uh, and inevitably um, they they didn't last the distance, um, but. Um, I found it very easy, and of course, I when I came to my botanical recipe, I had to fit it with that sort of quantity. You mm. know, and how, how, and so there was a lot of trial and error and all that, of course. But, but uh, I was reluctant once I reached the stage where I needed to make more, but I was reluctant to to move away from this twenty five kg yeah. recipe. Um, uh, because it's not about, you know, you get a 50 litre still, you, it's not, just not a matter of doubling the botanicals. It doesn't work like that. So if we can put a pin in that, Peter, because it mm. seems like you've moved from this idea of, of vodka, now we're talking botanicals, You've mm. we're now on to gin. So yeah. what was that shift from going from, I'm going to experiment and make a vodka, to, all right, okay, we're, we're moving away from that to well, gin now? Well, uh, yeah, I... I I pretty quickly dropped the idea of making Irish pot cheese, what a nonsense. Um, uh, so uh, gin did come in my sights, but it, but it took me a while to register that actually this distillate that I was making, well, I could say put it through a carbon filter and I should have a reasonable vodka, or I could get some botanicals and try and make a gin uh, or I could put it in a barrel and it'll go brown yeah. maybe it put, you know, I won't know for a year or two or three perhaps but um, it might make you know, a good whiskey so I didn't know that when I started out that this is the same alcohol being used in these three or four pathways um, so uh, gin sort of registered with me um, about the same time as the the vodka idea, um, but gin sounded a bit more interesting than botanicals, rather than be filtering something through activated charcoal, which I had no idea what that was. Um, uh, but botanicals sounded. Uh, uh, There's something alluring about it, eh? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, and and I already had some by the time I. I was even thinking about this on the drive home from uh, Bannockburn that weekend. Um, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, yeah, botanical. So there's wild thyme growing here by the roadside, by the truckload. Uh, I could harvest rosehip berries. They, they could form part of it and so on. Um, so vodka gin, it was pretty much the rose hip is, Same time, is really. a good one too, right? Because mm. um, there's only I only know of one or two other gins I think in New Zealand that use rose hip, mm. um, which and they're beautiful mm. gins. Those ones, it's the yeah. rose hip really shines. Um, yeah. I did see you also have some sort of manuka in there. So is it manuka honey? Is that or is it manuka flower? Uh, yes, manuka, but the the leaf. Oh, the leaf. Yeah, leaf, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Nice, yeah. yeah. I've seen so if, if, if it's yeah. uh, if it's available. Yeah, yeah that's that's a kind of a significant part of it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what you guys uh, think of it. Should some people, some, some, yeah. some yeah. people think it's a bit forward on the on the flavour. How did you settle on the recipe for your, your flagship here, the Peninsula Gin? How did you settle on that one? Trial and error. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I read that you needed juniper, so I got some <laughs> juniper. Um, and uh, uh, and I thought, oh well, yeah, it'd be nice to to um, include some New Zealand uh, based um, uh, botanicals. 
Manuka was an obvious one because mm. it's easy to come by. The Wild Time from Central, the uh, the um, uh, the Rosa, um, although they are um, a dreadful thing to have to harvest. <laughs> so you are bringing up that Wild Time from Central Otago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, because I, I, I'm down there three, four times a year. Oh, yeah, I right. love the place. Yeah. Um, and are there any botanicals that you're gathering from around the Littleton area? Uh, well, the Manuka mm-hmm. uh, comes from the peninsula. Um, uh, that's about it at, right. at the moment. Mm. Um, that nose is very sweet. It is, yeah. It's um, a lovely sweet nose. I think it's a bit of that rose hip um, mm. coming through. Um, and definitely the manuka dip as a manuka. Yes, most definitely that manuka. <clears throat> it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, and, and what's the strength of, of this one, Peter? Uh, 42. Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty common, I think. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, what's yours, Tom? My you... gin. It's 57. Oh, right. So it's, a, uh, it's a navy a, strength. A, a navy <laughs> strength, sort of. Yeah. Wow. It's a, mine's, mine, mine, the whole idea with mine is to make something just sort of out there and a whiskey drinker's gin. So, you know, I know there's mm. lots of people like yourself making great, you know, um, classic gins, you know, and uh, I just didn't feel like I could add anything to it. So, yeah. um, but this this with like Manuka mm. and that thyme and... and um, and the rose hip, like that's a really New Zealand thing to sort of mm. make, which is quite good because you see some of them and they don't have a ton of New Zealand influence to them. You know, they're just a London dry um, with maybe one botanical or something. But yeah, this is very, it does have a New Zealandness to it, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my, as I say, some people have said to me, oh, it's, it's quite forward on the flavour, Peter. And, <laughs> uh, and I, I, my response to that is always, well, I don't think the customer should have to buy a double to get flavour. <laughs> well said, yeah. There are so many yeah. gins that you, the minute you put a splash of tonic in it, it mm. just yeah. wipes it out completely. Mm. But you're right, just, this is dancing. I could just kind of feel these wee pops of flavour <laughs> dancing over my tongue, and, and it was, that mm. was quite an experience. Uh, so what did you say, because you were trial and error, figuring out what your base ingredient mm-hmm. for the spirit was going to be, what did you land on in the end? For, for, for this one here, for the Peninsula Gin. Um, what botanicals? Oh, no, no, oh, no, the base ingredient for the spirit. Oh, uh, some uh, malted um, spring, uh, winter wheat. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What I started oh. with. Yeah. Um, uh, and I've uh, moved around uh, a bit and... Um, and also, I also use some plain old sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's it's. Um, yeah. I'll be interested to see what uh, you think of uh, this other one, which as okay. I said to you earlier. Um, uh, was uh, made using um, wine. Yeah. Um, but it was. It was uh, old wine. It was wine that was past its drinkable right. stage, most of it. It had been sitting in a winery who, I, I won't mention their name because I swore not to. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, it had been sitting in a winery up uh, Nelson Way and, um, and it was just ends of various vintages that, um, that uh, that never sold, but it was just stuck in the corner of a large shed that was their uh, winery, and um, and uh, this this uh, the current owner had just taken over the vineyard and the winery, and he wanted rid of it. I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> and I, I just happened to be up in Nelson, and my vehicle, which has got a logo on it. Was was parked in the street and and I was um, just leaning against it, waiting patiently for 
uh, for uh, she who has to be obeyed um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to to um, to return. And um, he he came up to me this uh, and said, "Are you Littleton Distillery?" As per the truck there, and I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I'll tell you what." He said, "I'm I got a vineyard," and he said, "I've got a lot of old wine that I don't need and don't want." Do you want it? And I thought, oh, okay. Um, how much? Uh, oh, it'd probably be three pallets of probably 50 cases to a pallet. So I thought, oh, yeah, I can sort of manage that space wise. I, I didn't really have a, available space, but but I thought, oh, I'll just stack it outside. It's been <laughs> some that's been sitting outside anyway for a long time. And um, so that, I said, okay, I'll take it. And then uh, that solved an immediate problem for him, and that was the excise tax on it once it left his premises. If it was leaving to go to another manufacturer of alcohol, he wouldn't have to pay the excise tax. Ah. I would be paying it once I turned it into whatever I was going to turn it into. There you go. Gin. Um, so solved the problem for him. So, um, so he gave it to me. Yep. But the three pallets turned out to be 10 pallets. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Plus two big apple bins, you know, the orchard wooden apple bins, each with, with 998 bottles in each one. Oh my God. Oh, so there was a mix of, of... Stuff that had been bottled and then stuff still it, in it. It, all, it was all in the bottle. Oh, right, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. A mixture of mainly Pinot Noir and, um, and Pinot Gris, um, some, uh, some syrup, Syrah, um, a lot of, um, most of what was in these apple bins was... Um, I'll try and get my tongue around it, Montepulciano, okay. which is not a great variety that's seen much in New Zealand, but mm. uh, it had a, a, a brief popularity, I understand, in the Nelson uh, area. Um, so, yeah, there were 10 pellets. I didn't have room for <laughs> 10 pellets and two bins and 40 square metres. Right. Um, and so that led to um, a scurry around to find someone who could take it. Uh, that wasn't easy. Um, the, the first two or three carrier firms I rang who said they had licenses to hold alcohol, it turned out they either had a license to hold alcohol pending export or they had a license to old alcohol that was being imported pending its release by customs. This sort of thing, which I, neither of us uh, had any inkling of <laughs> be quite uh, difficult. Uh, I had a yarn to uh, Zach uh, Cassells mm. thought they might have some space there uh, but that didn't quite work out. He, uh, he was optimistic but but he, he found that they didn't have uh, a license to hold someone else's alcohol. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, finally I found a carrier firm uh, who, who didn't have um, the right sort of license but were prepared to apply for one. And I thought, yeah, this is going to take a while and whatnot. But customs, bless them, uh, were very cooperative, Thinking. and within two hours yeah. we had a license. Hmm? Two? <laughs> I have never heard of government working so fast. No. Well, I, you know, um, you hear a bit of criticism about uh, customs, but it's mostly myth, I think. I've yeah. worked with a lot of government agencies, yeah. and they are the best. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, they said when I applied for my license originally, they said to me, "Why would we make it difficult?" For your PV, you're going to pay us money, <laughs> um, and, and like I, I didn't think I'd get my current pre- uh, premises licensed 
Uh, I thought there'd be issues about security and whatnot because uh, they had all these questions about do you have cameras and do you, uh, what locks have you got? And uh, when they came around to have a look, uh, um, I asked them about this. They, they asked me all sorts of questions, not that many, but they never mentioned security. So I raised it. And um, they said, ah, yeah, well, you know, probably a, a little press button lock on the door is not sufficient, Peter. Um, but it's your problem. It's, you know, yeah. all, all, we, all, all we'll say to you is that if the alcohol leaves the premises by any means, uh, including burglary, you have to pay the excise tax. If the place burns down and the stuff evaporates in the fire, it's gone. You have to pay the excise tax. Mm -hmm. You've got to pay it if... So if somebody breaks in and mix it, or if it all goes up in smoke, you're paying the tax regardless. Yeah, the, the tax is due. You, they did go on to say, because I was horrified about that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and, and they did go on to say that... Um, that you can apply for remission, uh, but you wouldn't want to bet on getting 100% remission, and you wouldn't want to uh, bet on having uh, your application following a second burglary and <laughs> no improvement in your yeah. security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fair enough. You know, so... so so, yeah, they, they were very helpful and they, got, they approved this license. I sent them a, uh, the list of, fortunately, they'd actually done a stock take in Nelson and so they had all the types of wine and how many bottles and cases and whatnot. So I just sent them that list. The carrier firm filled out the form online for the license and... Um, so, did you distill all this wine now? And why right. not? Why not make right. a brandy? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pop one of these. I'm gonna pop some of the the tonic just so that we have it there if we need it. But yeah, right. can, can, can we pour some of it? Pour some of this. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Why, yeah. why a gin and not a <laughs> brandy? brandy? Yeah. Uh, with the wine. Yes. Uh, because um, I, th I thought about the brandy, and then I thought about the cost of barrels. <laughs> um, and then I thought, well, maybe it's a sort of, <laughs> it would be a rubbish in, rubbish out. Right, right. Because the wine was bugger. Yeah. I'll <laughs> put it politely. Right. Um, uh, some of it was pretty close to still being drinkable, drinkable amongst the reds. Um, this has definitely got a, a, a fruity floor yes. to it, doesn't it? So, what was your approach? What's your approach to kind of do everything? All right, well, I'm going to do a run of the the Pinot Gris. I'm going to do a run of the Syrah, or, or was it just? Yeah, that's that, that's how I approached okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I've I've kind of abandoned that um, <laughs> at, um, on the second uh, reflux um, distilling. Um, I guess it would get rid of most of the flavour, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that's what I was. Yeah. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. Uh, but I sort of hear. So did it come out rubbish? Still, like if you're thinking you thought it was going to come out rubbish, but did it? Did it? Well, um, I mean, we're, this we're, is great, but I mean, like, did you try pot distilling any of it to see? Or uh, well, I did. Um, I did um, do the pot still run yeah. and uh, and. Um, take off all the bad stuff and, uh, and whatnot. So, um, and then I gave it uh, two um, reflux runs mm -hmm. um, and, and a botanical run. Because this is, is it the same botanicals as well? Yeah, the same botanicals. It's a different gin. It, it's, oh yeah, wildly. This is like, I'm, fresh cut great for like fruit yeah. salad green apple it's yeah i i would not have said that they're related at all no no that that base like that it's definitely a great base for sure you can definitely tell that uh, damn i'm gonna have to print another label <laughs> <laughs> no i mean I, I i is honest i mean 
it, it doesn't taste like the same gin to me, but it's um, it's beautiful on its own. Like it's as its own thing. It's it's really nice. Not on the note. The nose isn't as that the first one your your flagship there was very honey sweet on the nose and this isn't it's it's more of a it's not quite as sweet but it's far more fruitful have you tasted it yeah wow it's still quite lively it is yeah there's so much um i don't know how to say that silky grape and silky yes. fruit and um oh, you want that one i've got a i've got a bottle of that peter if you need Oh, let me do that one. Um, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. This is, this is a, a nice, a lot of flavor in that. It's quite fruity. And, yeah, I, I like that. Oh, but it comes, yeah. see, and this is the... I don't have to try it with this now. Because, it, let's face it, most gin drinkers are not going to sit there and sip gin neat. Yeah. That's just not mm. how it's done. No. And you, you are still wanting something distinctive that when you put your mixer of choice in that and that is still it has not washed it out at all that is lively and bright and it's yeah it, it's Ooh. you i mean i get that most of the time you want something uh refreshing there's a whole lot of gin that's drunk in summer and, and mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to coming into summer but um yes there was some as you know, I, I, I hosted a gin tasting last night and there were a couple that you, you added the, the tonic in and it felt like it was a it was a fizzy water that was gonna get you from A to B. And this is not this is not it beast. This is very much a you know that there is gin in there and, and it's yeah, there's a lot going on. I don't think he's too happy with us because he's gotta print new labels now. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why does he have to print new labels? <laughs> uh, it, were, were you going to call it Peninsula Gin, were you? Uh, yeah, I was rather hoping for a seamless, oh, yeah, almost yeah. seamless transition, yeah. you know. Um, but, I have um, mm. a distillery back in Canada that was my local distillery called um, Dylan's, um, and um, they make some of theirs from uh, grape and some of theirs from grain, and you can definitely tell the difference when you use the grape yeah, one. Grape's okay. just a unique spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's... might just have to be a limited release for you. <laughs> well, how how many pounds yeah, do yeah, you have left? Yeah. How many are left? Now? Well, um, so yeah, it turned out to be uh, in total four and a half thousand liters in six thousand odd seven fifty bottles. Um, uh, that's um, just looking at it now. Uh, it's all had um, it's all had uh, a pot still run. Yeah, and it's uh, it's sitting there at um, fifty two, fifty four ABV. Mm. Uh, I I did. Um, Reflux, uh, 20, 20 litres of it uh, um, just the other day, um, and um, and uh, this is the this is the result. Mm -hmm. um, so I hadn't tasted it myself. Right. Uh, I I had um, I had just made small quantity thinking about today uh, and so it's quite young yeah it hasn't been yeah. in the bottle long that might be uh, might be an issue I don't um, think it's harsh or anything like no. you get from a new gin off the still like it's not that it's that no it's just a big flavor to it um, that grape really shines yeah. yeah which is which is funny because you originally said that this was not there are other distilleries that make gin from grape and they hero that fact and they celebrate that fact and mm. they try and bring that through. And you said that that wasn't your intention. No, no, I was trying <laughs> to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get rid of it, bring it over here, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> rid of the uh, flavour. I'd read a bit about um, um, Geeson's who make... Uh, Forget the brand name for their gin. Yeah. Um, Dancing Sands, yes, the yeah, yeah. and I, I, I read that Dancing Sands had used uh, a vacuum 
Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? A vacuum still. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the idea being that, that that would retain more of the, the wine flavour. Uh, but I assume that they were using, you know, the quality wine. Where, whereas my wine was... So-so. Was perhaps not. <laughs> uh, did you get to try any of the wine before? Like, did you oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah like, yeah, what did yeah. you think? Was it okay? Or was it... <sighs> some of the... Some of the Pinot Noir wasn't too bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but that's, I mean, and, that's what's... You know, I've got another friend who is a former wine shop owner and knows a bit about these things. And yeah, he thought uh, he thought some of, some of it wasn't too bad. The whites, he thought, uh, they, they wouldn't... Uh, they don't last as long, usually. No, um, no they don't. Yeah, so yeah, so I've got some thinking to do. Yes, yeah, now. I, um, it's a really nice gin, though. Oh, I, 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 you've I got guess. something special on your hands. Um, yeah, and uh, not a criticism. Yeah, yeah, a limit, yeah. not like yeah. the first. A limited one. release, maybe. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, um, and can, and uh, I can keep making my standard brew. So I mean, you could yeah. put it through a charcoal, but like again, you're going to lose that beautiful. Mm. flavor to it i know because I, I could see where you're coming from there's a production thing you've got to get through you know now yeah. you've got it and you're counting on it but well like, you know yeah as i say we've we've done four and a half thousand liters of uh, wine it's now down to about 900 yeah um and so it's going to be down further once i reflux it mm. uh, but of course then i'm going to uh, reduce it down so so the quantity now is about the quantity hmm. I've got. And if that's the case, uh, 900 litres is a lot of bottles. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge amount. I want to um, pivot briefly, Peter, to talk about Littleton, because yeah. it is a very, it's a, it's a distinctive place with its own unique character and uh, putting into context both for listeners around uh, New Zealand and, and elsewhere who pr- perhaps don't know, it would be, while there would be many in Christchurch who would say that Littleton is, is a suburb of Christchurch, mm. I dare say that many, yeah, the way you're shaking your head already, <laughs> most Littleton locals would, uh, they would not stand for that kind of description no, at all. No, most Littleton uh locals long term died died in the wall uh, uh, will not put Christchurch on any form uh, you struggle you would struggle to get them to put the postal code on <laughs> you know, where do you live you live at days road littleton wherever um, and uh, yeah so it's so, a it's a coastal suburb that separated from Christchurch by you know by hill range hills and uh, through which there is a tunnel thankfully, um, uh, part of Banks Peninsula, so um, uh, Littleton Harbour and Akaroa Harbour would I, I guess be the biggest uh, harbours on that peninsula, but there are lots of others, um, which um, uh, Port Levy. Governor's Bay. Oh, well, Governor's Bay is on Littleton mm. Harbour. So is Fort Levy for that matter. Um, but some around the, the eastern side, um, Decan- lovely bay called Decanter Bay, which mm. is quite a good name. <laughs> uh, I, I thought about using the name. That's a good name for a spirit for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, stage. Um, and um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a great. Community, there's an amazing, uh, amazing range of artists of yes. all sorts of fields, um, and uh, and there is there's quite a lot of alcohol consumed. <laughs> <laughs> consume. I think prior to the earthquake, there was something like seventeen hotel licenses. Right. Uh, the permanent population is only about 800, 900. 
Um, uh, there's probably still now about 17 licenses, but a good slice of that the, they're not hotels anymore. There's only one or two um, bars, civil and naval, mm -hmm. little to arms, formerly, uh, formerly known as the Irish, uh, only because some, uh, someone put an Irish bar name on on the outside of the building. It's about the only Irish thing about it. But, but plus Guinness, I suppose, on tap. But, um, yeah, it, and when you come through the tunnel from Christchurch, it's only 10, 12 kilometres, um, there's a sense of, uh, I find anyway, uh, there's a sense of going away for the weekend almost. Because oh, I lived in the city before I moved to, uh, for about 10 years, uh, before I um, uh, moved to Littleton. And uh, yeah, I had this sense of uh, going something, I'm just not going to the suburbs, you know. I'm not going I, to. I, when I moved here, I felt every time I came through that tunnel, it was like a different world. It was a totally mm. different world yeah. going through that tunnel. And you come out the other side and you're just in a different place. It's yeah. fantastic. It does feel different. Yeah. And yeah. It, you just feel more relaxed. You know, it's just <laughs> stunning views wherever you look. I love it. Yeah. 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 So right. what, was, what was part of uh, your decision making? I mean, yes, you live there, but to start a business, why, why Littleton? Why Littleton for, for this endeavour? Uh, well, mainly because I was living there and um, uh, um, some, you know, some people would un unkindly say I'm an old bugger. <laughs> um, uh, but the, the truth is that, that I am getting on a bit and uh, I had, I decided that I wanted to see if I could get this gin making and what else, ever else it might turn into, um, established as a as a business uh, that was credible, that people wanted to uh, buy the product and, and so forth. Um, you notice I haven't mentioned uh, one that's profitable <laughs> <laughs> necessarily, um, but um, yeah, I, I just, I just didn't want to make my own gin and a few for my mates and whatnot. That didn't um, interest me at all. It was the challenge of um, seeing whether it could be made into a business which was credible um, and still leave me some time because um, to, to do other things. Um, so, uh, it's been, it's been an interesting, uh, pathway to, 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 uh, to try and combine those two things and, and sort of still have some sense of having retired from something <laughs> uh, and with, with a bit more spare time. But when I think about it, it was that spare time that led me to boredom that led me to think about doing this crazy thing. Mm. I've got a question because um, <clears throat> when I was thinking about naming Parrot Creek here, um, I thought about a lot of different names as you do. And one of them would have been something like Christchurch Distilling Company or something. Like I thought about a place name more mm. like New Brighton Distilling Company, but I felt there was sort of a weight to it. You know, I suddenly would have, would have felt I, I was responsible in some way, you know? <laughs> and like, do, do you feel any of that or do, what, do, what do you uh... think? A little bit. I'm sure there's, there's, um, there's um, pr people there who thought I was mad. Um, why would you want to do this, Peter? Um, you appear to be quite comfortably off. Anything I've read about, uh, that people would say to me, anything I've read about uh, people who start distilleries, uh, it's a big black hole. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not the first person to have told us that story. Uh, no. uh, and um, uh, yeah, they're, they're perfectly uh, correct. Um, but it was the challenge of that black hole, I think. Yes, fair. Um, they had a lot to to uh, to do with it. Um, and you know, we're 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 still on that pathway four years later. 
uh, I, you know, if, I guess if I had been uh, younger, perhaps with more energy, um, I would have gone hard at it and I, I would have reached hopefully that end goal after maybe two years or something. Mm. Um, but I haven't, I've just sort of cruised along and mm. managed, still managed to, uh, to um, uh, stay in favour at, uh, at home um, and, uh, and still managed to um, get overseas now and again. Oh, good. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, got to have a lifestyle um, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we try the limoncello next? Would that be you can. Yeah. Because, yeah. yes, I know yeah. that you said that um, I wanted a distillery that could be credible, and, and you mentioned the gin, and then you said other things. And I felt like, okay, see, here's somebody who is not content to have just, you know, you've made a gin, great, and now rather than, yeah. Because if we look at uh, some distilleries who might have a range of, say, three or four gins, for you to create one, you've created uh, this other one here that's still quite uh, new, uh, and then immediately to pivot away from gin to something else, what was the thinking behind the limoncello? Uh, there was no thinking. Um, <laughs> uh, that's the right answer. It, it merely illustrates... Uh, uh, my inability to stay on task. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I, I came home from a, a trip we had overseas and uh, we'd, we'd been in, in we're Athens and other places like that. We tried some magnificent uh, limoncellos. So how would you make that? Well, it's not hard. I kind of knew that, but the challenge with the limoncello is how to sweeten it. Because mm. most limoncellos you buy are, are very sweet. Uh, and I didn't want to have to say on the label sugar. Right. Um, so the challenge was to flavour it with uh, honey. Uh, and the challenge there is that um, honey uh, doesn't quite have the same uh, um, sugar strength or mm. whatever as, as white sugar. Mm. Uh, but it also always leaves something of a residue. Yes. And that is, uh, I've learned uh, from my beekeeper friend um, that is uh, to do with the protein in the honey and he said you'll never get rid of it you can decant it off and just leave that sediment but you'll still have a little bit of sediment but he said he said to me he said my view of it is that that's why the people who make limoncello always have a label that goes right to the bottom of the box because <laughs> any sediment doesn't look great on the shelf. No, you know, yeah. no, it doesn't. Um, and uh, so um, I got a whole lot of lemons and um, zested them and um, and poured some ninety-two percent ABV. Um, distillate it um, on top of that and it went yellow pretty quickly as it sucked the oil out and then I left it sitting around for about six months mm. um, and then I started to think about um, sweetening and I don't know that I've been all that successful I had a very dangerous afternoon on the Amalfi Coast and that was um, you, you would go into one shop the, and, and of course, it's a very popular touristy destination, lots of tourist shops, and you would go into one and the person there would be like, oh, well, we've got the best limoncello on the Amalfi Coast. <laughs> and you'd have a, a wee taster of that. Oh, that's that's nice. Thank you very much. Oh, no, I'll, I'll keep going. You go to the next shop. Oh, and we've got the best limoncello. <laughs> so you haven't gone very far, yeah. and you may well have had five, six tasting glasses yeah. of limoncello. My memory of those is very... 
very lemony sweet yeah. and, uh, and you know I'm guessing it must have been sugar this is far more refined mm. if you hadn't told me there was honey in it I, I would have picked it out for sure but it's mm. not it's not that bright kind of puckery lemon sweetness at all this is more like this is more like a hot toddy kind of you've got your your lemon um you've got a wee bit of alcohol and, and, and honey in there this is this is biting into a lemon almost you know you get the whole peel and everything and in there you know like if, have you ever done it to just try and oh, start a lemon to peel no. it or something i've, I've done it a few <laughs> why times. would you bite into a lemon yeah well you, i wanted to peel it you know but it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of first bite you get into it to start it start it off mm. that's the kind of i'm getting that zest you know but it's not mm. Mm, terribly sweet which i like mm. no no i think i see what you mean because it's got the um the oils the yeah, lemon yeah, oils yeah, of the yeah. is that more of what yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, okay. yeah, yeah. Most, most of the limoncellos that um, that i've i've tried always uh, i'm more, i would say it's sort of halfway to a liqueur almost mm, yes all yeah. about that sweetness and level of it because you read not that there's a lot of information uh, about the sweetening recipe but most of what you read that is available is is equal parts sugar and water mm. so it's going to be syrupy isn't it mm. yeah. um uh, I think that honey is, is quite good on that. It's not yeah. too much. I, I think it's maybe not syrupy, no. uh, it could um, uh, it could be it could do with some more lemon, maybe, um, and uh, a little more honey. I think I, I mean this is balanced for me. Yes, I like it as is, but mm. yeah, because that lemon okay. is right up front on the nose and when well and yeah, this is why I'm, I'm, I, I was sort of keen to do this because my palate to be honest is terrible well mine is terrible and, and <laughs> this my, is nose, is, my right? nose isn't great <laughs> either uh, so I'm constantly looking for uh, uh, people uh, to taste these things and and people that uh, uh, are not friends at this <laughs> point you know sign me up Peter. You know, yeah, yeah. sign me <laughs> up let's we, go we we uh we've only uh, the three of us have only met this afternoon <laughs> and, and, um uh, and so uh i i'm always highly re um reluctant uh not highly reluctant or ha highly uh keen to have the views of of people who hopefully have got better palates and noses than, than uh me although i suppose the, you know, the, the, the cynic in me says, well, you're not going to slag off my gin <laughs> <laughs> on a podcast, hopefully. But, but no, that would have been a fine outcome. <laughs> well, but, yeah, it would uh, have to be really you know, it would, yeah, have yeah, yeah, it would have been a bit, you know, bit <laughs> yeah. off. But, uh, but by the time I got home, uh, I would have forgiven you uh, because I would have learned something, you know. Um, so when and where is this limoncello going to be available? Uh, when I make a quantity <laughs> right. um, that I know I can supply. Mm. So this is an exclusive first look, would you say? It, it is. Yeah. Oh, so, right. so is the rum, uh, which is, yeah. a, is another proof of my... Uh, well, you brought it up. To, you to, brought it up. <laughs> so here my we inability go. to stay on <laughs> task. Because what I... What, what I intended was that I would have three different styles of gin. Right. At least three, uh, but probably no more than four. Uh, and so uh, I have made, but not put in the market, uh, a uh, blackberry Thank you. gin. Um, yeah, Do you want another really, glass? I've got some more glasses. Have, yeah. Thanks. Um, I have made a uh, blackberry gin. Mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, has um, in the bottle has a beautiful Pinot Noir uh, richness about. Uh, I did the see look, that on your website. The, uh, the, the, the look text of for it. Um, uh, it, and I'd like to uh, take that um, uh, a little bit uh, further. I think it's worthwhile. Um, 
So tell us what's... And my what's... great, my great uh, ambition is to make an oyster gym. Okay. All right. There are, there are others that have played along those lines mm. with... with mm varying results shall we say yeah. but that is I, I mean something along those lines mm. um, would very much be in character for Little Milton, Milton yeah, yeah mm. that'd be fantastic yeah okay so what's the tell us the story behind this run is this playing in, again into the naval history and character of um, Littleton maybe <laughs> 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 Um, uh, oh, what's the strength on that? Um, 37 and a half. Okay. All right, so no, sorry for, there was, I'm going to get to this nose, but tell us the story. What was your thinking behind it and why, why, yeah. Yeah, I'm struggling to, uh, it was, this was kind of. It doesn't uh, have to have a story. Nearly, <laughs> uh, nearly two years in the making. Um, from start to finish but it, it, it may be that it didn't need to be that long but which I'll touch on shortly but um, uh, I don't know what triggered it in my mind um, but again it was um, you know well, how, well, how would you do how would you make rum mm. um, and and how would you make it without putting it in a barrel? Okay. Yeah, there's no requirement. No. Yeah. Because um, most rums, I think, are made using an ex-bourbon barrel, because I think I'm right in saying the bourbon makers only use the barrel once. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Um, but again, space prevented me using barrels. Uh, cost had something to do with it. Um, but I didn't think it should necessarily uh, make a difference. And I'd had a conversation with um, with um, another guy in uh, Nelson, who I tracked down. He used, I know, just his name escapes me because it's three or four years since we had any contact. But um, he used to. Uh, he, he's a barrel maker. What it was. Oh, Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Cooper. Um, and um, and I had a, 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 I tracked him down uh, in Nelson, and I had a phone conversation with him, and I was telling him what I was thinking uh, about barrels and the rum idea and uh, whatnot, and uh, he said, "Why would you spend money on a on a on a, on a barrel, Peter?" Uh, and I said, well, I think you've got to. <laughs> and no, 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 no. He, what you need is the wood, um, the barrel wood. And he had this, I didn't fully understand it, but he, but he had this idea that, that if you put, um, I guess he was talking about, you know, large barrels, which when they're full, of course, are heavy. Um, he said to me, you put it in a barrel, some of that liquid will never come in contact with the wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess, unless you've got some way of turning yeah. the barrel, yeah. which, um, which someone working on their lonesome in a distillery probably hasn't got, mm -hmm. um, short of something mechanical. Um, so he said, um, he said, I'll send you down some samples of wood, which, which you did use, uh, I did uh, do. And, uh, but um, I haven't actually used them. Um, I read about a rum made in, well, a rum drink actually, rum based uh, drink, which is popular in the Dominican Republic. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a drink called uh, uh, Mama Joana, not marijuana, but Mama. <laughs> it's very popular over there, so mm -hmm. I understand. Um, and uh, 
and they uh, they distill molasses and whatnot, and, and then they put it with this wood and go to brown. Oh, that's interesting. So um, I managed to track down a company in the Dominican Republic who had this wood for sale. And um, and so I sent away quite an amount of money um, in the context of things uh, to the Dominican <laughs> Republic. <laughs> That sounds and like a, a few days awesome. later, I thought, oh, Petty, you're probably wasting, so you're never <laughs> yeah. going to see anything. Uh, and months went by, months went by, nearly six months, I think, possibly a bit longer now, I can't remember. Um, but at least five or six months went by, and one day uh, I uh, uh, went out the front door, and here's this battered box sitting on the doorstep and the almost literally the only thing that was holding this cardboard box together were the stickers from MPI and customs <laughs> as as it had passed from desk to yeah. desk to desk no one knowing what to do with it um, so I, I had already concluded that I, I'm not going to see my money and I'm not going to see any wood uh, but bingo, here it was. Mm. Uh, and so I did uh, the molasses and, and uh, cane sugar and uh, fermentation, uh, pot still run, strip run, plus another one. Um, uh, and uh, then I put it... Um, uh, in something like that stainless steel oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, vat over there, similar size, uh, and um, and uh, I added this wood. I had no idea how much I needed to add, uh, and I added other things that I read when I looked at. I went to liquor stores and looked at rum labels and what things they mentioned, you know, cinnamon and. And blah blah blah. But anyway, this wood turned it brown. Beautiful, mm -hmm. as you can see. This is beautiful, it's a beautiful and the, like the, golden reddish. The beauty yeah. of this wood is with some further research I've found that commonly it's used five times over before right. you, it's Does it start sacked, with an sacked or this. Uh, Ability to mm. does it start with an A? Is that what it is? Is it, is it, no. no? It's a it's a very it's it's like buying wood chips. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's it, the, in the in the in the bag that there's uh, there's it's it's as though someone put sort of inch to two inch round uh, branches and yeah. through a chipper. Mm -hmm. You know, on on the coarsest uh, coarsest um, result possible. Uh, and then it's got leaf in there, and it's got seeds in there, and all sorts of things. Um, and then I, I added to um, uh, yeah, some cinnamon stick and, and um, um, cacao and um, other things. Um, uh, some honey going. Is there some citrus in here? Um, some orange yeah. zest. Yeah. yeah, orange zest. Um, and it was purely a hit and miss thing. And I locked it away um, and um, left it and left it and got distracted by the, <laughs> by the gin <laughs> <laughs> um, and other things. Um, uh, and every now and again, I'd look at it and think, oh, should do something with that, you know, <laughs> bottle it, filter it, and bottle it. And more time went by, and more time went by, and so eventually, after eighteen months, um, uh, I bottled it. Um, and. Um, People, people say they quite enjoy it. Um, 
There's a lot going and, on in there. And, yeah. and 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 that it, and the what's all also become apparent is that it uh, has changed significantly in the bottle for the better. Oh, really? Mm. Mm. So better. my first nose is smoked barley sugar. Do you remember the barley sugar lollies that you used to get? Yeah. It's a smoked barley sugar on the nose, but then you take mm. that sip and it is classic orange and chocolate. You mentioned mm. that you've added the mm. cacao and the, the orange in there. Yes, yeah. like a beautiful dark chocolate with orange. Yeah, that orange, that Touches orange cinnamon. really shines for me Ooh. in that. Um, it's almost like having a cocktail, you know when you have like a, an old fashioned, you put some orange bitters in it, it sort of comes yes. across like that for me. And there's a little bit of a sweetness for sure. But again, and I, I'm, I'm not a, I do not have a sweet tooth at all. That's just, I'm, I'm far more savory than I am sweet. And, and I think that's why I don't drink a lot of rum is because a lot of mm. rum does tend to be on the sweeter side. Mm. And so I'm really enjoying this because it does have some of those sweeter flavors like the, um, uh, the, the, the chocolate and the, this, this bar, I can't get rid of the barley sugar note, but, no, okay. yeah. um, but again, I, I don't feel like I'm I definitely drinking the, a cocktail. Like the cinnamon kind of clovey sort of thing going on. And yeah, when, we, when we first bottled it, it was, uh, the cinnamon was very pronounced and right. that seems to have dissipated somewhat. Um, I think that's been for the best. Mm. Um, but my problem is that, um, so it, it sat in the corner for 18 months before I bottled it, and that was about six months ago mm -hmm. I bottled it. So, uh, so it's had two years. Um, but what I don't know now, because I didn't do any stage by stage testing, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, it, it could have been just as good after, and after some time in the bottle after three months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all I know, so really, so far as the future, I've got, the, the batch was about 40 bottles. I think there are about 30 left. Um, uh, too small to put on the market, too small to spend money on labeling, mm -hmm. really, unless you know Tom, uh, um, a cheaper label maker than, <laughs> I, don't. than I know <laughs> uh, at the moment. Um, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got, probably got to make another batch as a trial and and do some do progressive. A, do a second trial with yeah. this time. <laughs> and and although I <coughs> kept a careful record of what went in and in what quantities, and <coughs> along with the excuse me the wood. Um, fortunately, I've still got some wood. And fortunately, you can apparently use it over and over again, um, uh, because I still wouldn't be confident <laughs> about uh, it arriving. You know, a second of wood <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> yeah, arriving. Take, a, take another chance uh, yeah. on the Dominican Republic. <clears throat> so, it, it, if if it um, is acceptable and people uh, like it and uh, want to buy it, then. Uh, I suppose I might have uh, found a way of making a half pie decent rum, or hopefully better than half pie decent, mm. uh, <coughs> without a barrel. A it, is, barrel it, it is please. quite good, yeah. Um, I consider it a spice rum, I think. It's just yeah, it, it yeah, yeah, comes in that uh, and, category. But I think it's got a lovely flavour to it. I think you could definitely sit here and um, smell it. Because I think if, uh, if you want to make a, if you want to call something a dark rum, I think it has to have uh, been in the barrel five years or maybe even eight years. Well, see, here's the thing. I've got a little bottle of dark rum up on my shelf up there that's white. <laughs> and right. in my research, I've found that I think it's what they make it from initially because I mm. understand some of the white rum 
could be aged still, could be brown, but it might be made from just a lighter profile of ingredients. Uh, okay. Whereas the dark rum might just be like a heavy molasses, dark sugar sort of flavor to it. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure what the yeah. New Zealand rules are though, because I know yeah, that's, that's no, the we're, problem. We're, the rules yeah, yeah, we so are much from country we to are country. short on rules. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I said before about five or eight years um, is, is is probably something I've read uh, from overseas. It's a blessing, uh, in but I think we are. I think the um, the Aotearoa Distillers Association are starting to work on mm. uh, and and in particular rum. Uh, yes. Definition, yeah, and it may. I think it may be out. I think it is too. I haven't read it. Um, yeah, and um, yeah. So uh, I think you got something on your hands there. It's beautiful. Yeah, mm. congratulations. Thank you. Thank forty you. bottles is still. I, I mean, a lot of my whiskey releases are forty bottles. So, you know, it's <laughs> it's um it's just the scale we're on. You know, it's different. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm keen to make another batch. In fact. Um, uh, I bought the um, molasses and cane sugar I need, um, but I think this time I'll only fill the 250 fermenter up to 200 litres <laughs> yeah. and leave more headroom for that explosion of, uh, <laughs> of yeast, and I'll have the I'll have that inch pipe yeah, ready at the rigged up from day one, from, um, uh, and try and have. Um, 200, 200 litres anyway of, of um, uh, fermented result yeah. to, to, to uh, distill and then I might have, I don't know, 150 bottles. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, what excites you, Peter, about the future of the Littleton Distilling Company? Because what, what excites me is the fact that you've gone like, okay, I've got a pretty good gin, I'm going to try another gin recipe, Oh, here's a rum. Let's give that a crack. Yeah, so it's like, and if and if this isn't being too blunt, do you know what you're going to do next? <laughs> um, uh, I, what I'm going to do, uh, what I need to do next, is focus on our, our signature gin and uh, market that much more. Um, than uh, we have um, done so far. Um, the only advertising really that uh, that we've done are these t-shirts uh, and that's what sold the first two bottles uh, when someone saw the t-shirt in Turkey and returned home just happened to live in Christchurch and returned home and went into Vino Fino. They hang on, um, no. They yeah. saw so they're overseas. They're in Turkey. They see a T shirt for Littleton Distilling yeah. Company, come home from Turkey to then say, Where can I buy this? Yeah. They th yeah, they I, I don't know who they are, but That's um, the most uh, expensive uh, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Because I'm only looking at the cost of the T shirt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it kicked it off because at that stage uh, I had something like 400 litres of gin uh, I had uh, 1500 bottles um, I had 3000 labels um, but I hadn't asked anybody to sell it mm -hmm. and I'm not a sales person mm -hmm. really I don't think anyway um, but I, and I saw this as, as being something of an obstacle because I also thought that if I'm going to, if, if people are going to be persuaded to put this on their shelf in their liquor store, etc., or their bar or whatever, um, they, they, they're going to want to talk to the person who made it. Mm. Um, and I'm getting better, but. Um, but uh, that's cold calling is not me. You know, I find that uh, difficult. Um, and uh, so that that's a, a bit of a chance. But we need to, I think, focus on on this, this the signature gin. Um, we need. To, one or two other styles, 
I've got I've got I've got a um a, 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 a batch um which, uh, it's not in the bottle uh, yet but I've got a batch uh, of um, gin where the only botanicals uh, are juniper wild thyme from Central Otago and rosa okay from Central Otago. Uh, and um, I think that's that could be a winner. Oh, simple, right. nice. simple, straight, basic. Three botanicals. Yeah, it tastes like good. it to me. It, it, it's just sitting over there somewhere yeah, <laughs> in the yeah, distillery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I figure it can't go off or anything like that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm keen about styles of, of, of gin, um, but I'm also conscious of, of the fact that, um, that uh, one person can only do so much. <laughs> and I can't do it, uh, even if I've had enough time and energy. I can't do it in the size of premises I've got at the moment, 40 square metres, just under. Uh, it, uh, it's, um, it's not a safe place to be doing it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It does you get know? quite tight, doesn't uh, it? Yeah. How big is how big's this whole place, Tom? This one's 100. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. So okay, less than yeah. Yeah, for, for context. Yeah. yeah, that is quite small. Uh, and it's a narrow, skinny piece. Uh, it's about uh, three metres wide and, and 13 metres long. Um, uh, and, um, and, and the fact that it's, it's not ideal um, uh, because there's so much stuff crammed in there, um, uh, was illustrated just recently by um, by my accidentally uh, knocking off the bench my very expensive instrument for, te for testing the ABV. Oh, no. Um, what do you use? I've got the new um, Alco Dens from uh, in Town Power, that little, the little one. You know? Oh, right. I might have a look. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show it to you. Uh, yeah. later. I... Peter, oh. thank you so yeah. much for coming and for sharing... Yeah. for sharing the products of your labour and your time with us here this afternoon. I have... Thoroughly, again, we've only just met this right. afternoon, but I thoroughly enjoyed myself and that very first gin that we tried, that flagship, really is something. If you enjoy a, a very bright, bold gin, bang. Where can people buy it from? Mm. Where can people buy it? Oh, they uh, can uh, buy it uh, from uh, Vino Fino, who uh, uh, hats off to them. They, they would sell more than any other outlet. I don't think they'll mind and others will mind me saying that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, particularly at Christmas, um, they pretty quickly started to sell twice any other brand on their shelf. Mm -hmm. And it got as high as five times. Wow. Um, so uh, they've, they've really looked uh, after me and um, uh, have done great things to, to uh, promote it. Uh, Juniper Collective, um, lovely shop in the city. Mm. Um, number of uh, liquor, land, liquor land and super liquor stores. It's probably, a, we're, only, we're only in about 8% yeah. of the available uh, 150 or more in Greater Christchurch. <laughs> so is it just in Christchurch then? Uh, no, we've got um, we've got uh, a couple of outlets in in uh, Wellington. Okay. Uh, but that opens up a whole new story, uh, a different story, and that's about freight. Oh, the freight cost it's oh. horrendously expensive. Yep. Uh, so much so that um, I've gone down the pathway of. Um, of, of uh, put, thinking about putting the gin in fresh, who knows what else, uh, into a 
paper bottle. That's great. Well, we'll, we'll finish it off with that. Um, thank you again, Peter. And um, thank you, everyone who's watching and listening at home. Um, hope you'll you'll follow along and share this around. And uh, be sure you leave a review on our, our channels, the Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all them, because uh, that's the best way to get new people to watch this. And uh, if you want to buy Peter's stuff, go check out the Littleton Distillery Company's website. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us, distillationnz at gmail.com or any socials at uh, distillationnz. So otherwise, cheers to you for listening and cheers to you, Peter. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, guys. Cheers. It's been a pleasure.